December the 6th is a very difficult day for me and many of my colleagues because it's a day that requires us to remember horrific events, reflect on those events, and respond to those events. The first step in that process is remembrance. For me, on December the 6th, 1989, I was 13. I was in grade eight. I was growing up on a small farm in southwestern Ontario. I had two parents, two siblings, a dog, and a cat. I felt safe and secure. On December the 6th, 1989, 14 women were murdered because they had chosen to pursue an academic career in a discipline that was predominantly male-dominated. A gunman entered an engineering class at Ecole Polytechnique in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. The class had about 60 students in it. He separated the men from the women and asked the men to leave. There were nine women left. He shot all nine women, killing six of them. He then moved through the hallways of the building and into other rooms, shooting additional women as he went, killing another eight. And then finally, he turned the gun on himself. And this was, at the time, the first and the deadliest mass shooting that we had seen in Canada. I heard about these events on the news the day that it happened and I remember feeling unsafe. I remember thinking that this kind of thing doesn't happen in Canada. And I wondered if maybe things were different in Montreal compared to where I was growing up. I also remember wondering how a person could end up with this much hate that they could perform such an act. And I still wonder that today. The women that were killed were not necessarily feminists. They were simply people who had chosen to pursue a certain academic path. They were interested in math and science, and they thought that engineering may be a good career goal for themselves. This is exactly the same path that I was going to take a few years later. This is just like the path that many of our students here at the University of Guelph have taken. These women could have easily been any one of our current students enrolled in our STEM programs here at the University of Guelph. And it is the future of these women, our current students, is the reason that it is so important for us to remember today. We have to remember the victims who lost their lives that day to acknowledge the hate crime for what it was and to continue to talk about it to pause, remember, reflect. Because it is only by these conversations and those actions that we can build a culture that does not condone that kind of hatred. We have to hold each other accountable. We need to collaborate. We need to agree to disagree in a respectful way. Honor the sacrifices of the women who have come before us. And this is the culture that we need to create. This is the culture that I am proud to be a part of. This culture accepts, embraces, and builds on the diversity in all shapes and forms. I want to take a moment to remember the 14 young women killed for a devastating reason in 1989. When I look at these victims' stories, I am struck by the fact that I am the same age as the youngest woman. These women were all passionate, dedicated individuals with a drive to do something meaningful and were some of the trailblazers of female engineers. These women, with their varying interests and goals, could not only very easily be classmates of ours, but they also helped build the foundation that allows women like myself to study in this field that we all love. These women should have been allowed to pursue the bright futures I'm sure they all would have had. In my personal experience, there are still times where female engineering students need to work harder to prove themselves to fellow students or employers. There are still incidences where women need to prove their credibility and competency in situations a male student would not need to. 
For instance, I have been in male-dominated group projects where there was an assumption that I, as the female, would do all the written work while being excluded from the technical. I personally did not let this stand, however it should not be up to us alone to solve this issue. This all comes down to the basic level of respect we view each other with, and unfortunately, gender can be a defining factor in this to some people. These incidences are thankfully the exception at Guelph, however they do still exist. I'm grateful to pursue my education in an environment that actively works to support and invest in women engineers. However, we are still a minority in this field, both in our educations and in our future careers. Only 13% of licensed Canadian engineers are women. That is a ridiculously small percentage. We as a community of aspiring engineers of all genders need to work together to continue to expand and drive our field in a positive direction. We need to remove the barriers and biases preventing women from reaching all levels of STEM, and we need to do it together. I hope to reach a time where it is not shocking to introduce myself as an engineering student, a time where one of the most reported facts about a new Nobel laureate is not that they are a woman, and a time where everyone is given the same opportunities regardless of their gender. Gender-based violence and bias is still a very prevalent issue in our society that exists to this day, both inside and outside of the STEM field. There is no place for this hatred and discrimination in our society, and we all must work to eliminate it. Women and gender diverse individuals should not have to live in fear when pursuing their interests, educations, and passions. While progress has been made, we are in no way finished with this mission. I hope that by remembering these 14 amazing women, we can continue to work towards a better, more diverse future. Thank you for listening. Genevieve Bergeron. Ilan Coquet. Natalie Crotu. Barbara Daniel. Anne Marie Edward. Maude Havirnik. Maurice Lagenier. Maurice Leclerc. Anne Marie Lamay. Sonia Pelletier. Michelle Richard. Annie Saint Arnaud. Annie Turcotte. Barbara Klushnik Vidayevich. This bouquet represents the 15th victim, those that were and will be affected by this horrific event.